Hi guys, it's Kirsty here and thanks for tuning in to my channel Crypto Flamingo. So today we are going to talk about a company called MindSync. So as usual, please do not take this as financial advice. I am not promoting pump and dump schemes. I am simply having a look at the strategy behind the business and how I think it's going to survive in both initiation and long term. So we are going to jump right into a few core aspects to do with the strategy that I think are important. So first of all is their core product offering. There are two aspects to the MindSync product. The first of which is a knowledge database. So they're trying to create a community of AI professionals. So anybody that works in or has knowledge of AI, which could be beneficial to both nurturing other members of the community or providing advice to companies who want to implement AI to their business. So that's aspect one. The second is a marketplace. So they want to enable AI professionals, either independently or with the assistance of a company, to sell products for passive income on a marketplace, which is going to be built into the MindSync platform. These will be ready-made solutions, which other companies can then buy and use in their own business. So to facilitate these functions, there are two other core parts of the MindSync platform, one of which is the ERC20 smart contracts and the use of blockchain tech. So companies will be putting up competitions, which will allow AI professionals to help them build solutions for their business. These will be offered via ERC20 smart contracts. So they're going to write all the terms and conditions into a smart contract and then that will enable the rewards to be auto distributed when the terms and conditions of the contract have been completed. They will also use blockchain to store any metadata. So anything to do with uh, who was the author of something, to timestamp when it was complete, any of this sort of information. So the next aspect is the IPFS and CPU GPU. So these are more of the services which they will be buying from subcontractors in order to facilitate the platform to function. Next, we want to look at the USPs for this product. So yes, it is a niche product in that it's addressing the AI sector specifically, it's addressing AI professionals specifically, but ultimately the product doesn't have anything, in my opinion, which makes it truly unique wherein it could be replicated and offered by another company if they so wished. So the target market. Depending on which part of the company we're discussing, the target markets vary. So in terms of the marketplace and the community aspects, we know that they're targeting AI professionals and we know that they're targeting companies with a need for AI to increase their efficiency or reduce their operational costs. Next, we know they're looking for IPFS nodes, which could be users of the community, it could be external or could be online providers. Same as the CPU, GPU providers, they could be users of the system, they could be crypto mining farms or they could be online providers. However, what they have not stated is anything to do with geography or demographics for any of these aspects. So we don't know where they want to target people or who specifically they want to target. We just know that these are the core aspects they would like to address. So next, the marketing strategy. If the target market hasn't been clearly defined, then it means the marketing strategy itself becomes a little bit more difficult to achieve. I am assuming that they want to attract worldwide contributors. However, the company itself is registered to Baker Street in London, which is based in the UK. So perhaps they intend to target the UK. Next, we know that the UK is currently part of the EU. This is prior to Brexit. And we know that a lot of the resources involved in MindSync platform are from Europe, with the founders coming from Russia. So it's possible that they may choose to target Europe and UK first, because that's where they have cultural know-how that they could best target. But we have no evidence which actually states this. This is purely my assumption. So it would be nice to have a bit more information on who they're going to target, how they're going to target them.
Next we're going to look at the operations of MindSync, so how they're actually going to work. This shows you some of the core contributors here with a little grey highlight on which aspects they're going to be involved in. Now this is just top layer. There is obviously granular information behind this, which I have not included. They are currently going through an ICO process and as such they have provided this graphic here which shows the token distributions. Now they've stated what is going to be allocated to project development, marketing, business development, research and legal. That would imply that they do have some kind of plan in terms of how they're actually going to function when they are up and running. However, they haven't given any great detail behind this. They've also given this graphic here, which shows their milestones and the deadline deliverable quarters. So again, this indicates that they have some sort of plan as opposed to going in blind. One of the other things that's important is how the company is going to actually make money over time. They're in their sales and commercial strategy. I felt the information on the white paper and the website was rather lacking for this actually, but I've tried my best to pull out their incoming and outgoing top level expenditures. So we know that the ICO will generate funds as well as a listing fee, which is achieved from the companies who put competitions up. I next have assumed that they will take a commission from the sale of any product offered through their marketplace. That is the ready-made solutions which they'll be selling to other companies. However, they have not stated this in either the white paper or the website. I have just assumed that that will be the case. Next, the outgoing expenditures. So we know there will be employee salaries. There will be ongoing platform fees, i.e. hosting, domains, etc. And they're also going to need to reimburse the IPFS and CPU, GPU providers. But whether that's in FIAT or Maya, their built-in token, I'm not sure. However, there will be some kind of fee for that facility. If you have a look at this slide here, they're stating they want to buy back tokens over time and they'll be doing a quarterly burning of tokens to try and ensure that the tokens get value over time. But they've also said that the amount of tokens that will be in circulation will never exceed a certain number. So if they're going to be doing quarterly burnings, surely they will run out eventually. I'm not sure. This is all a bit too technical for me, but it's an important point to consider in terms of token value and outgoing costs for the buyback of tokens. Ultimately, my review of this particular section was that I couldn't see any considerable incoming costs, which would give me confidence that the company is going to be profitable and sustainable over time. That said, they have not put an awful lot of detail into this section in either the white paper or the website. So perhaps if you were to talk to the company themselves directly, they may be able to give more information and make you feel a little bit more comfortable that they will be profitable and sustainable over time. In terms of their growth strategy, I feel that it's lacking in information as well. They have implied that the product will be available to worldwide users and contributors. However, they have not said where they're starting or where they will develop into. So their growth strategy, much like their marketing strategy and their target market, these three aspects really need to work together and have a little bit more detail. One thing which they've mentioned, which did give me a little bit of confidence that they've considered both operations and growth and future potential issues, i.e. risk mitigation, was that they've stated that they recognise Ethereum faces scalability issues and that in order to mitigate this risk, they see two potential ways forward. One being that Ethereum works out its problems and everything's hunky-dory. The next being that Ethereum fails and that they will put their efforts into building their own blockchain. I feel this is potentially not the best solution because you should leave tasks to people who are competent at them. That's not to say that MindSync is not competent at creating blockchains, but to say that if their industry is AI, focus on AI and outsource these tasks to someone who has the experience in that particular field. I feel it may not be the best use of their resources because creating a blockchain is ultimately a ginormous task. You might be better to assess the market and select a product which is already in existence, which meets the needs of their platform. So there was three core aspects in relation to this product which gave me flags for concern. The first is intellectual property. 
So a product which has been created on the MindSync network, who owns the IP for that product? And whose IP is it going to be in relation to? The company's registered in London. The UK stands currently by EU directives. Therefore, if it's registered through MindSync, it should, in theory, be compliant with EU legislation. However, the company that raises the competition, which the contributors assist to create the solution of, they may, via NDA, put in some kind of terms which state that the intellectual property belongs to them. But does it only belong to them in their geographic region, or do they gain the legislation through the EU because they did it with an EU partner? I'm not a legal person. That's something which would be nice to have a little bit more information on. Next, there's the rating aspect of it. So they've stated that companies will be able to see a rating applicable to AI professionals who request to participate in their competitions. That rating is created via a few different ways, one of which is professional qualifications, one of which is community interaction. This means that if someone has lots of experience in the field but has no qualifications, then their rating could be lower than someone who is qualified but has no experience. Therein, someone who contributes quite largely to the community aspects, i.e. the chat room, could falsify their rating to be higher. So it's just something that I thought, how much granularity of detail can a company see? Can they see where these ratings have been awarded or not? It's again something I would like to see a little bit more information on. Finally, this one is a bit controversial, but I'm showing you because I would feel bad if I didn't. The founder of the company is a Russian gentleman who in 2016 founded a company called Cortex Lab LLP. Now, this is listed as an AI research and development company and it's registered to the same address as MindSync. Now, I'm bringing this up because there is another company called Cortex Labs, which is an AI product based in China, which sounds very similar to both this Cortex and MindSync. Now, I cannot see any obvious relationship between the China Cortex and the Russian Cortex, but it just raised a flag for me that I would feel bad if I didn't show you. It could be that the MindSync founder, Konstantin, met the Cortex Lab team back in 2016 prior to registration, and maybe he bought the name so that the Chinese product couldn't enter the EU-UK market. Maybe he has something to do with the Cortex Lab in China, or maybe there is no relationship at all and it's complete coincidence. But I'm bringing it up to make you aware that it is something that was a concern to me. To summarise, the target market needs to be better established. That will help to plan both the marketing strategy and the growth strategy. And I'd also like to see more information on the incoming revenues for the product itself to know that there's going to be sustainable income over time. Generally speaking, I think it sounds like an interesting product, but I feel that it's, again, just a little bit lacking on information to give me confidence that it's going to be sustainable, profitable, and a long-standing, reliable investment. So I hope this has been useful. Please feel free to leave me a comment if you have any questions or criticisms. And if you like this style of content, please subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.